Good morning and uh, welcome to uh, our fifth public lecture. Uh, this lecture is on uh, carbon dieback. It's a disease of kava caused by uh, cucumber mosaic virus. And um, we'll talk about uh, first the uh, history of kava or uh, some background and then uh, uh, the developments in the research on uh, cucumber mosaic virus. Uh, this is a picture of the uh, cover plant. On the left, on the right here is a picture of a single uh, cover plant. Uh, this cover plant is uh, known as uh, Kawahina in Tongan because of the uh, green white um, uh, stem and also the leaves um, and the uh, picture on the left is a picture of a uh, plantation uh, on one of the islands you can see uh, beyond the uh, cover plantation is the ocean uh, so this is typical of uh, cover plantations in the islands. Uh, most of them are grown uh, on uh, high uh, islands overlooking the ocean. Uh, just a uh, quick classification of uh, the cover plant. Uh, cava has uh, a lot of relatives uh, in the Piper genus. But cover itself uh, is uh, called Piper mephisticum in Latin in the Linnaeus um, classification system. Uh, cava belongs in the kingdom plantae or kingdom of plants, division tracheophytes or the vascular plants, class angiosperms or the flowering plants, order Piperales family Piperaceae and genus Piper. Most of the uh, historical accounts uh, of Kava in the literature uh, describe Kava as originating in uh, the Pacific, uh, specifically in the islands of Micronesia Melanesia and Polynesia and uh, only in the Pacific uh, kava is grown and used and um, as far back as the history goes uh, kava has always been grown in the Pacific and not known to be used elsewhere in the world. There are about 150 varieties known uh, and these are varieties uh, of uh, Piper mephisticum. But uh, in the Pacific, uh, there's probably less than 10 varieties uh, that are grown uh, commercially in uh, the main islands where kava is used. And uh, you'll find in the uh, literature a lot of legends in each of the islands about the origin of kava. Uh, just to uh, give us a, a picture of the uh, level of production in the islands, uh, Fiji is probably the largest producer of uh, kava with about 4,000 tons per year from 21,000 farmers 
and this uh, generates about 151 million uh, dollars in 2017. <coughs> so Kava is a very good uh, income generator for uh, Fijian growers. <coughs> in Vanuatu, uh, probably the second largest producer of Kava in the Pacific, uh, there is some record showing uh, distribution of 135,000 kava seedlings <clears throat> and uh, 44,000 uh, cuttings in 2019. Um, kava is uh, actually uh, actively promoted in Manuatu as a uh, commercial crop and a key commodity in the rural uh, economy. Uh, most uh, of the growers uh, who grow kava are small holders, and uh, that's how uh, most of their income is made through uh, kava production. And in Vanuatu, they are trying to uh, plant a million cover seedlings by uh, 2020 in this uh, promotion. <coughs> the main cover grower <coughs> countries in the Pacific are Fiji, Hawaii, Samoa, Tonga and Vanuatu. Uh, but you'll also find uh, some kava grown in uh, other islands like the Federated State of Micronesia and French Polynesia. As already mentioned, kava is uh, thought to be indigenous to uh, most Pacific islands and uh, were already produced and used uh, prior to uh, arrival of the Europeans. Uh, its current use and cultivation has changed very little uh, in hundreds of years. Uh, and many of the islands have their own uh, stories about uh, how kava came about uh, in their islands. The um, ingredients that uh, give kava its desired effect are compounds known as uh, kava lectones. And uh, there are 18 kava lectones identified. Uh, different kava varieties uh, have variations of these uh, lectones present, which is why some varieties are considered more potent than others. Uh, the cuttings or the nodes of the cover are the uh, main uh, uh, planting material to um, um, produce a uh, cover and shown in this picture here a uh, cutting or a node which has been planted in compost and uh, roots starting to come out and there's also some uh, shoots uh, starting to come out uh, of uh, an older shoot which has been cut off and in most uh, kava growing countries this is how uh, the cover is started off. The cuttings are, are grown in trays, and once they uh, start uh, growing, then they are transferred to uh, plastic pots like these ones until they are um, big enough for uh, planting out to the field. And usually, uh, from this size to about uh, a foot high. Uh, they are 
are ready for planting in the field. Uh, this is how a normal kava plantation uh, looks in the islands. Uh, in this case, uh, Tonga, uh, the kava is planted um, usually in a um, rotation with uh, yams and taro. And once those are harvested, then the kava is planted uh, uh, in the holes in the ground. And uh, this cover plantation here is probably about uh, three years old and uh, looking very vigorous and uh, probably uh, just about ready for harvest. Um, let's have a look at um, the work on cucumber mosaic virus uh, to date. Kava dieback has been around uh, in the Pacific and in Tonga for a very long time, perhaps uh, since the 1950s and 60s, when the cultivation of kava for commerce increased and the acreage and also the possibility of using infected cuttings uh, spread. The increase of the cucurbit cultivation in the 1960s and 70s also, uh, such as, as uh, watermelon, for example. In Tonga, uh, watermelon became a very big crop in the 60s and 70s. In uh, large areas of uh, eight acres, 16 acres or more, were planted by uh, commercial growers. Uh, so it was uh, new. Uh, and uh, probably uh, one of the reasons why uh, cucurbit viruses such as uh, cucumber mosaic began to um, become important in uh, uh, the uh, agriculture. Although much research was done, all the conclusions blame anthracnose, uh, a fungus called uh, Clomirella cingulata whose conidial state, uh, Colletotricum chiasporiotis, is normally found on most uh, plants. And this fungus uh, causes a wide range of uh, plant diseases in, in the Pacific. It was not until the Australian Center for International Agriculture Research, or ASIA, began a PhD research project on the cover dieback that the virus was first discovered. After one year with no success, I was uh, invited to join the PhD review with uh, Dr. Paul Ferrar and uh, Professor John Brown of the Australian National University. And I had recommended to them uh, that uh, we should look at uh, some samples with very typical uh, virus symptoms uh, to check whether virus particles are present. And so uh, some of these uh, samples were sent to the Australian National University and they found uh, particles that look very similar to cucumber mosaic. And after that, I uh, ordered uh, some ELISA antisera for uh, cucumber mosaic virus from uh, Sigma, and uh, we had uh, optimized uh, them to um, uh, two surveys uh, on a large scale in Tongatapu and Vava'u for the presence of uh, cucumber mosaic virus. And I had done this survey with uh, Richard Davis, the PhD student, and we found that uh, the cucumber mosaic virus was present in Vava'u and Hapai in most plantations with the symptoms. And uh, I had moved to uh, the University of the South Pacific in Samoa in 1992, and Richard and uh, Professor John Brown went on to carry out the uh, work uh, uh, also in Samoa and Fiji. And uh, some of this uh, work is published uh, in uh, some of the journals.
the uh, Eliza work, uh, which I had done uh, with Richard, uh, was based on uh, our uh, established uh, virology lab at uh, Rydney Research Station. Uh, it was established for work on uh, vanilla viruses, but uh, because ELISA is a um, universal uh, test which can be used for a new virus, it was uh, quite uh, easy to set it up for uh, work with cucumber mosaic virus. And I've shown here on the picture on the right how the ELISA test works actually. Uh, first, you coat the uh, microblades with uh, the specific uh, antibodies to the virus. And after washing it three times, you add uh, a sample, the sample to be tested for the virus. And then wash it again three times. And then uh, add a second coat of uh, and some enzyme labeled uh, antibodies. And after washing it uh, three times again, you then add a substrate, which uh, reacts with the enzyme uh, attached to the uh, antibody, and a color develops. And the color tells you uh, whether there's virus or not. Um, so the, uh, um, intensity of the color is a good indication of the amount of virus uh, in the sample. And this is uh, the test that we used to uh, test for uh, cucumber mosaic virus. <coughs> uh, you have to excuse me, I've got a bit of cold <coughs> and uh, um, coughing uh, not going away yet um, <clears throat> this is the uh, equipment we used for the ELISA test <clears throat> on the left is the uh, are the micro blades these are the micro blades that we use for uh, <clears throat> putting the samples in and on the right here is the ELISA reader uh, the reader actually uh, records the intensity or the uh, absorbance of the uh, color development, which gives you uh, an idea of uh, the amount of virus in the sample. <coughs> uh, this is just a uh, classification of the uh, cucumber mosaic virus uh, virus uh, classification is actually uh, very new uh, we didn't have them uh, when I was at the university but uh, it's probably a, a good idea because uh, there are more and more viruses being discovered and we should have uh, some kind of system to uh, order their uh, uh, differences, I suppose. Uh, one of the uh, issues with uh, working with plant viruses is that uh, there may be uh, uh, a large number of people working on the same virus and they uh, would give it a name after searching through uh, the literature and the history and so on of these plants and uh, finding nothing they would uh, call it a new virus and, and give it a name and so uh, you would end up uh, with uh, a large number of names for a single virus until uh, uh, much later when uh, uh, development in uh, uh, literature records and also uh, the internet um, uh, suddenly uh, threw up uh, quite a large number of uh, names for some of the viruses and in this case uh, the uh, cucumber mosaic virus 
was named uh, as banana infectious chlorosis virus, coal use mosaic virus, cowbee banding mosaic virus, cowbee ring spot virus, cucumber virus one, lily ring spot virus, and so on. Because uh, a cucumber mosaic virus causes a large number of uh, disease in so many species of plants peas, peanuts, celery, soya bean, spinach, tomato, pea, um, even banana. And uh, these names are all uh, are referring to the same virus and they are called synonyms for the same virus. Uh, these are the particles of the cucumber mosaic virus. Uh, the particles on the left here. In a close-up, <coughs> uh, more like a uh, diagram, I suppose, on the right. <coughs> uh, <coughs> many of, of these pictures I have borrowed off the uh, internet, so you might see uh, some uh, numbers and uh, uh, references uh, on, on these pictures. <coughs> this is how um, cucumber mosaic virus uh, appear on cowpea. You can see uh, there's um, uh, a mosaic and distortion of the leaf. Uh, there's some yellow areas and dark areas on the lamina. And on the right here, uh, this is how it looks on uh, capsicum. Uh, there's also a mosaic on the leaf with uh, light and dark green areas. Uh, this is how the uh, cucumber mosaic virus looks on the uh, cucumber, cucumber fruit. There's a lot of uh, distortion, uh, stunting, and also lumps or blisters on the fruit. On the right, uh, this is how the cucumber mosaic uh, looks on tobacco. The leaf is uh, smaller than normal. There's a lot of blistering dark uh, blisters and also uh, light green uh, areas on the lamina. Uh, this is a uh, cucumber mosaic on tomato. There's uh, a lot of uh, distortion and uh, uh, foliar um, um, I suppose yellowing of the uh, tomato leaves. On the right here, this is the uh, cucumber mosaic on uh, pumpkin. Um, there's a mosaic on the leaf. They are also smaller than normal and very, very obviously uh, infected. Uh, just looking at cover type. Uh, this is how cover dieback appears on the uh, cover stem. As you can see here, there's uh, necrotic, uh, dark uh, blotches on the node. And then eventually the uh, stalk breaks uh, at the top here. And uh, the whole uh, cover stem dies. That's why it's called dieback because it starts at the top uh, and dies back to towards the bottom of the plant. And uh, these plants usually recover. Uh, and in a plantation like this one, uh, you can tell from a distance that some plants are infected by the intense uh, yellow leaves at the top of the crown of the plant. On the left here with the arrow uh, you can see the young leaves are green. 
but on the right the young leaves are very very strong yellow color and uh, this is a very very uh, good indication that those plants are infected and this is uh, how the uh, dieback starts the very young leaves start to show a mosaic and uh, yellowing and then the tip uh, turns necrotic and the stem uh, starts uh, rotting or become necrotic and slowly dies back uh, to the base of the plant and uh, usually in a, in a plantation situation you would have uh, a few of the stems uh, already dead uh, but because there's up to maybe 30 stems on one plant, you would have up to 10 stems uh, that are dead, but there's continuous growth coming up. In over many years, uh, slowly the whole plant will die, depending on how big it is, because the virus doesn't work very fast. It uh, actually kills off the plant uh, slowly. It's only in very young plantations that the uh, effect uh, is much more enhanced when the virus actually kills the plants. Uh, this is also a close-up of uh, the uh, symptom. And I've drawn a picture, a picture here on the right just to show the blisters, uh, these little uh, mounds that I've drawn here with the arrow. These blisters are uh, sometimes, uh, as I've shown before, uh, sometimes they are darker in color um, to the yellow around the lamina, like the leaf on the left here. You can see uh, I've pointed out uh, these blisters on the uh, uh, cover leaf. The leaf is actually uh, turning very yellow and uh, the blistering uh, is appearing um, usually on the on the new leaves uh, when the young uh, uh, leaf grows the blisters and the distortion of the uh, leaf uh, shows and normally the older leaves don't show any symptom at all it's only when the the rotting starts that you can see uh, yellowing of the uh, all the leaves and again this is the advanced stage of the uh, dieback after the leaves turn yellow at the top at the young uh, uh, leaf uh, stage then the dieback uh, starts and continues downwards And uh, as I've mentioned, in uh, some cover plants, you can see a lot of dead stem, like this one here. There's one, two, three dead stem at the base. And this one here, there's a broken stem, which is growing back. Uh, this is uh, very common in uh, plantations infected with cucumber mosaic, that uh, large numbers of uh, the plants will have uh, maybe a third or a fourth of the stems uh, dead but the rest of the plant apparently looks healthy until the yellowing starts at the top and uh, starts rotting backwards so usually the bigger the plant is uh, the slower it takes uh, the virus to kill it the smaller the plant the quicker it will die off uh, in maybe a year or two the whole plant will die but if it's a very large plant, uh, it may take years and years. In fact, uh, it may be harvested and uh, it's still uh, not dead yet. Um, you can usually tell uh, how the disease is spread within the plantation uh, in the direction and the way it spreads. <coughs> In this uh, plantation here, if the spread of the disease uh, starts from the uh, 
uh, seaside and then moves uh, upwards inland uh, you can usually uh, uh, work out that uh, it's the wind because the wind direction usually comes in from the sea that the wind is actually uh, spreading the uh, virus but uh, it's not actually the wind it's the small um, insects or aphids that carry the virus and the wind actually blows those uh, small insects from plant to plant uh, progressing uh, upwards and these little insects uh, carry the virus uh, with them and so you can usually work out that uh, if it's spreading with the wind direction that uh, it's the aphids that are carrying the virus. And if the plantation uh, uh, disease spread uh, is starting from a single spot and then moving outwards, like uh, these black arrows here, then you can usually work out that uh, in this case, you only had a single infected plant and the aphids are actually uh, flying outwards, taking the disease with them to infect the rest of the plantation. And if the spread uh, is random, as I have shown here in the uh, black spots, let's say these black spots are infected plants, and you have one, two, three, four, five, six. It usually means that you started off your plantation with uh, infected planting material and the disease is not spreading at all. So uh, it may mean that uh, there are no aphids at all. Normally in a plantation situation, there's a lot of uh, weeds that grow inside the plantation as well as around the edges. And these weeds, um, they host the aphids. And you'll find uh, large numbers of aphids on these weeds. And when they uh, uh, develop wings and, and fly off, they start probing on the infected plants and then they take the virus from infected plants to the healthy plants. And that's how you'll see the disease starting to spread from these original spots of uh, infection. The losses due to cover dieback uh, is quite substantial. Uh, if you are starting with infected material, you may find that the whole plantation will die off in two years or so. But uh, in the surveys that I did, um, the most serious uh, losses were more than 50%. And these were fairly large uh, plantations uh, by local standards. Uh, they were two to four acres in size. And uh, most of the plants were dead, but there were only uh, a few plants that were still alive after two years. And that's a very, very uh, huge uh, loss to the grower who had uh, put in a, a big effort to uh, collect uh, his planting material, grow the plants, and then plant them out to the field without knowing that he is uh, inadvertently uh, spreading the virus. And um, it's a wasted effort, uh, actually. Uh, in this case, uh, you can replace the dead plants with uh, healthy material and uh, get uh, some uh, profit back uh, into your plantation. Uh, this is what the uh, aphid looks like. Uh, <clears throat> I have shown you before the aphids uh, that transmit the uh, banana virus. Uh, this aphid here is a different aphid. Uh, this aphid is called uh, Mysas persicae. Uh, on the right here, 
uh, an aphid with the young and on the left uh, the aphids uh, developing wings uh, and it's a very interesting um, uh, cycle of the uh, aphid uh, life cycle that uh, usually they don't have uh, wings until the plant uh, or the host uh, is getting uh, overwhelmed or overpopulated and then they start developing wings and fly off and it's those uh, flights that are uh, actually important in uh, terms of um, <coughs> disease spread because they um, fly off and probe on some plants which are infected and then fly and uh, probe on healthy plants and take the disease with them the virus particles because they have a, a very long tube at uh, front on the head it's called a proboscis and this proboscis uh, is actually inserted into the plant cells for uh, extraction of um, uh, plant sap which is the uh, which they feed on and this plant sap actually contains the virus particles and when they uh, take out the proboscis it's still uh, got virus on it and when they move to the healthy plants and insert the proboscis uh, into the plant cell they also insert the virus particles into the healthy plants and again some more pictures here uh, this is uh, how the cucumber uh, mosaic uh, look on uh, <coughs> uh, cucumber leaves the older leaves normally uh, show some uh, chlorosis or yellowing but the young leaves uh, actually uh, show uh, distortion and blisters like the uh, this leaf here is a pea uh, leaf. It's got a mosaic and uh, blistering uh, on the leaf. <coughs> so one of the ways of uh, spreading a cucumber mosaic virus, or the most important way, uh, is uh, using uh, cutting from infected plants so uh, when you take cuttings from these plants you are actually uh, uh, using infected planting material because viruses uh, spread uh, systemically inside the plants all parts of the plant even though it's still uh, looking very healthy is already infected and so uh, you take the cutting and plant it and the new shoots coming out uh, will show uh, virus symptoms <coughs> uh, <coughs> cover type back is actually uh, very easy to control uh, like most of the uh, plants that are propagated uh, vegetatively, uh, kava is uh, uh, <coughs> propagated uh, from cuttings only. And uh, <coughs> it's very easy to control the uh, spread of the virus. One of the, uh, the first things you have to do is to uh, <clears throat> find areas where the virus is not present. Uh, for example, if it's an island, if the virus is not present on the island, that is a, a very good area to get your planting material from. Go through the whole plantation and check the leaves of the plants 
to make sure that uh, young leaves are not yellow and showing any mosaic or blisters, that the stem uh, do not have any uh, necrotic or rotting, and um, usually use only those plantations where no symptoms are present. And so you can easily uh, isolate the virus that way. Take only uh, clean material and use them for your uh, new cover plantation. And you have a very, very good chance of uh, keeping the virus away from your crop. And secondly, you can also uh, clean out the weeds from inside your plantation and also around your plantation. Those weeds that uh, host the aphids that spread the virus. If you can keep your uh, plantation free of those weeds, so there are no aphids around to uh, uh, spread the virus, then you basically uh, uh, grow and harvest uh, kava without any disease problems. And I've just uh, listed here the symptoms. Firstly, the yellowing and distorted leaves of the young uh, growth. Uh, it's also rotten uh, yellowing leaves and stem on the older parts of the cover plant. Uh, I have written uh, a number of books uh, about Carver Dybank, uh, about the uh, work that I had done uh, uh, with uh, Dr. Richard Davis and uh, Asia. And in this book here, which is available from Amazon.com, I have uh, shown pictures and also uh, explain some of the work that we did, not only on kava, but on vanilla and squash and uh, a few other things, uh, yam and bananas as well. And on the right here is an ebook also available from Amazon.com Amazon with a summary of uh, how to control kava dieback uh, if you are thinking of uh, growing kava commercially. And uh, as I've mentioned, uh, it's very easy to control uh, the virus as long as uh, you know uh, what to do before you start. Uh, just a bit of uh, interest um, on the work that uh, I did uh, on viruses, and uh, in this case, uh, vanilla virus. Uh, this is a picture of an electron microscope. Uh, it's actually the biggest uh, microscope uh, in use by science. And uh, you can enlarge the uh, pictures uh, up to 60,000 or, or more. And that's why you can see very, very small particles like virus particles. In this case, uh, this is uh, vanilla necrosis polyvirus from uh, Tonga. Some samples of vanilla from Tonga that I uh, had extracted and used in uh, the University of Auckland. And this uh, microscope here is uh, exactly uh, the same kind of microscope that I used to take this picture of the uh, vanilla necrosis polyvirus from Tonga. Uh, <clears throat> so it's a very, very useful tool uh, for the uh, plant virologist and science in general. Uh, this is just a summary of uh, some of the proposed work uh, that I think uh, would be very uh, useful for any uh, work in the Pacific. Uh, <clears throat> the first item is uh, tissue culture. Uh, so far, I have uh, not come across any uh, 
this is called the work of Kava. Uh, when I was working at the University of the South Pacific with uh, Dr. Mary Taylor in the uh, Disagricultural Laboratory, um, she did uh, mention to me that uh, she has tried many times but uh, has not successfully uh, disagricultured Kava. And I think uh, so far no one has successfully disagricultured Kava. That might be an excellent PhD project for uh, any student who is uh, willing to do that uh, <clears throat> for the Pacific. Because once you, you get the kava into tissue culture, it would be easy to uh, uh, develop a whole lot of uh, uh, scientific uh, projects out of it. But while it's not uh, possible to put it into this culture, uh, it will be limited uh, in many ways uh, as a, a commercial uh, venture. Um, cucumber mosaic virus uh, has been uh, uh, more or less uh, controlled in uh, countries of the Pacific where uh, we had done uh, some of the work since 1989 and um, advised the growers and the local uh, national plant protection organizations uh, on how to go about uh, isolating and uh, controlling the virus. And uh, this kind of work has to be uh, ongoing. Uh, because with viruses, you, you can never uh, have 100% uh, control. Uh, as soon as you uh, let your guard down, uh, an epidemic will um, hit uh, crops in uh, such a pace that you'll probably be surprised that uh, you'll find the virus everywhere when you thought that it's already under control. It's um, very, very fast. Uh, when it when it spreads but uh, easy to control so uh, and it takes time because uh, cleaning out the uh, infected material and replanting with uh, clean uh, material it takes years so it's not something that'll happen overnight it may take uh, five ten years before you can actually uh, clean out the uh, viruses from the fields. And that's why it's important that you keep it going and monitor the fields all the time for any virus uh, presence. Because uh, once the virus comes back, all that work for 10 years or so uh, is uh, gone. You have to start again uh, and uh, try and clean it out. And so it goes on. Uh, that's the uh, <clears throat> end of our talk on karma. And uh, thank you for watching. Um, <clears throat> I'm still working on the uh, public lecture on uh, watermelons. But um, uh, hopefully uh, we'll also have another public lecture public uh, lecture on <laughs> viruses. I think this flu is uh, <clears throat> really uh, mucking up my uh, pronunciations. <laughs> but hopefully we'll um, uh, get a public lecture on van vanilla viruses uh, done as well.